Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle the front forks. I'm going to change them. I'm going to uh, cut these off and make uh, forks which look more correct. Now, here are some uh, forks um, picture I've got off the internet. You can see down towards the base, they should have a slight bend forwards. This allows the wheel to sit slightly higher and in front fit more, if you follow. So uh, it ha should have a little kink at the base. Also, you can see how they should look at the top. Now, these tyres here are probably the same spec tyres as I am using um, on, uh, on this bike. The real well bag tyres are probably slightly deeper, see? But for the price of them, I'm going for the ones which are a little bit lower in, in terms of the, the wall um, height of the tyre, you know, the depth of the tyre. Um, so if you look at this, when you put the my style tyre on, you can see the gap is increased, whereas when you put the, the proper well bag tyre on, the gap is very small between the top of the, um, the forks there and the tyre. So you can see there's a difference. So if you were to put the proper tyres on and have the same RPM coming from the engine, then the, the bike would actually go slightly faster, you know, for a given RPM, providing the, the engine can deliver that speed. So, um, I'm going to try, I'm gonna, for the moment I'm going to stick with these, so just in case at a later date I do put the proper tyres on, I'm going to try and leave a gap. Now you'll see here there is a gap on this, but I'm intending to reduce the height of these forks by cutting the metal which is between the bearing carrier point there and the base here, I'm going to try and remove the area where this bolt is sitting through. Now this bolt was for, for having a mudguard on the kid's bike, for holding the mudguard on. Now there's no need for that, so I'm going to cut that off just above there. And that's going to give me um, possibly 20 millimetres if I remove off there. So basically giving me 20 millimetres there, I can then reduce the gap here. I'm going to be um, I'm going to be reducing by about an inch. I'm using the forge. Um, I just need to keep things moving around here a little bit. Basically I'm using the same metal that I used for the frame with some studding running through the centre of it because I want the forks to be fairly rigid. So this is what I'm doing at the moment. I'm going to be uh, messing around with this and getting the flame a bit hotter. Uh, but where I've got the bar sat, it keeps rolling off the edge of my table here. So I'm going to be beating the end to flatten it out, hopefully with the bar still in there. I will see how this works. If it doesn't work, I've got more pipe. I'll just saw it off and start again. So I'm going to try flattening it out and putting the bend in it. So just filling you in on where I'm up to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the two fork uh, legs first then, then once I've worked out that they work out okay I've made them correctly then I'm going to start cutting these off here and fabricating a new top as you can see the top of the um, of the forks has this gap in there for the wheel for the correct tyre to sit up into that gap so, yeah. Also, while we're, while we're looking at here, 
you can see the original um, front end um, well, call it bearing, but swivel point on the frame for the for, for the uh, for the column to sit has a grease nipple on here. Now, not all of them have grease nipples, so this one could have just been added by someone. I suspect it probably has been. Um, now that lends credence to the fact that I don't believe this was designed with any bearings in it. They didn't have bearings fitted inside these the steering because they were only designed and I'd, uh, um, to be used for so many months most likely or weeks or even a couple of days so um, they weren't going to have many miles clocked up so they didn't bother putting bearings in them now as you know I've put bearings into mine and it's changed the layout Really, I dare say I could cut more metal off the front here and bring the forks higher again. But part of me says I want to keep that distance to about eight centimeters between the bearings to give it uh, to, to to make it last longer, so that it doesn't get rattle in the in the column. So I'm going to work on redesigning the forks. That's going to be my next job. The inner side of the fork, I'm trying to keep a flat on that side, and um, the slope on that side, if you follow, and try and get it nice and wide so that I can put a 10 mil hole and slot through it. I think I can probably live with that. You can see it's got a slight forward bend on it. If I need to do it again, put more of a bend in, I will do. Right, so I'm having a go at making these forks. So I'm working out the basic uh, design of the top of the forks here. Now, as I've said previous, um, this is the lower profile tyre, which are cheap to buy, and that's what I'm using. 
and you can see there's a fairly large gap between the top of the tyre and the base uh, and the underneath of the uh, the fork top there yeah so uh, I've basically just had a go at making uh, these up these are what I've made on the forge uh, so I've hammered them out put a slight bend in them yeah and I've made this up basically this is shut up this is a piece of 2.5 millimeter thick uh, mild steel 30 millimeter hole I've drilled loads of holes and chiseled out and filed bent the two sides and that sort of a profile yeah and it's five inches in length uh, four centimeters that way 30 mil hole so you get the idea cut the two forks uh, pretty evenly uh, this is a bit of a by eye job I'm afraid um, strapping this up with cable ties and I'm going to have a go at uh, doing this and hope that it works out pretty reasonable. So I'm going to weld these around the inside there and there, flip it over, weld the other sides. Then once I've done that, probably a time to strip the pipe off the sides of this here and fit that piece of pipe through my hole and then weld that round on the inside there that way I should get a nice um, fit with the top of the metal up against the base of the bearing carrier here yes yeah, so I'm going to be getting on, on with that and hope it works out well Okay, I've now cut the two forks off the uh, steering column. Um, these are kids' balance bike forks. So uh, what I'm doing now, I say I've ground that back, and I'm now taking around 20 mil or so off the base of this pipe, and I'm going to be fitting this on to the front uh, sort of up at that level there um, I'm going to be welding that on then once I've welded that from the inside then I'm going to build the metal out so that it starts to look more like that there you follow? Right, so get on with that. Yeah, so uh, welded that up. Not brilliantly, but you know, it's 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 there. Um, so what I want to do is want to try and fit a extended steel, you know, a shaft through the centre of here, and then cut this so that it's a hinge, basically cut it down either cut the two sides down or cut the center out of it you know and then cut another piece of the bar so that it fits through fits together and then stick a, a nice sort of like six mil pin through it so it's a hinge point but um, I'm gonna want to cut this down a little bit lower so once I put um, the locking nut on here it's going to finish just about the tip of my thumb around there then I want this bar so I'm going to cut this surplus threaded section off and have the hinge fold around that point there do you follow? I'm not having it right down tucked in there I'm having it extended back to about there I know it's not exactly how the originals were done, but um, I think it should look uh, okay. These forks should point forwards like that, you know, where I've got the, the, the hook, the bend, sweeping forwards. 
Uh, you know, if I clean these up with a with a file, draw file it a little bit, um, they should look okay when there's some paint on. Uh, yeah, so uh, not too bad there. Uh, yeah. Okay, the next stage is to start forming the framework or the body around here. So basically I've cut some uh, plate steel out, all the same metal I've been using on uh, all of the bike. Uh, I've used it for the, um, for the seat supports, I've used it for the, we'll call it like um, frame guard down here yeah so uh, number of points so I'm using this it's about 2.5 mil gauge so I'm basically welding uh, or I'm going to be welding up from the inside of the frame um, frame structure here then what I'm planning on doing is probably taking a piece of bar right down through the center here um, and mounting a hinge up on the top so basically there'll be a hinge mounted on this end for the steering column to fold and that'll fit down through the um, the steering column to the middle of the forks here then I'm going to fit some sort of device here so that the bottom of the the, the shaft comes through and fits into like a socket then I'll stick a bolt or a pin in somehow I could put a pin in through the side which will uh, which will lock that bar into the center and keep the hinge captured so basically if you want to strip the steering column out first of all you take the pin out at the base um, or bolt out the bottom and then you, you drop the centre shaft and steering column out. So that's the idea. In fact, I've been doing a little bit of digging around on the internet, printing more pictures. And here is the base of the forks on a real uh, well bike. And you can see there's a screw going in the side here and there seems to be some sort of device maybe there's a pin going through the central structure of the, um, the steering column which locks into a slot in the base of this framework so it's very similar to what I've come up with the idea of doing uh, there must be some similarity but I'm doing it differently uh, yeah, but it's an interesting idea, you get the idea. I could obviously put a, quite a heavy pin right through this thing and that would lock the uh, that central bar. So I've got ideas, but first of all I'm making this outer body work up. I'm going to weld this side and you can see I've been folding the sides here but once I've welded here I'm going to basically tap this round with a hammer and then weld it there and then I'm going to form the other side round and where the angles are at the top you can see I'll be able to grind the surplus steel off with, with, uh, to form the correct shape so well, there we go so I'm going to be getting on with that now but I won't be videoing it because it's just ta too time taking okay so once the front and back plate are uh, welded on you can see as I said before I'm going to be able to grind a hacksaw off the surplus steel around here. Now basically the way I've designed this is so that once the metal meets around at the sides there's a gap and basically by now welding in that gap I'm going to be welding straight through onto the, um, onto the fork coming down as well. So that's going to make the fork 
be set in one locked position so in order to do that I've fitted the wheel in position and uh, I'm going to mig it up now and then flip it over and do the other side then once I've made it solid and join the two plates front and rear then I'm going to take the wheel back out and I'm going to mig up the uh, space between the fork and the casing so that it's all completely solid then once I've done that then I'll start making uh, fabricating the base of the uh, of this mounting uh, of this housing whatever you want to call it so uh, frame for for frame for the forks <laughs> I suppose I should call it I don't know uh, so yes yeah, so you get the idea it's basically just assembling lots of little pieces that you've got to make a piece at a time and welding them up simple stuff So you can see that's cut away really nicely and um, all looking pretty good now. What I've done is I've just welded round the two corners there and I've also welded inside on the inner forks. You might not see it very clearly in there, now you can't. So the next stage is going to be um, uh, laminating the inside of the uh, of this casing so uh, it's all come out quite nicely what I have done is in the bottom of the well bike forks I have fitted a slot as you can see down there it's around eight millimeters um, wide the slot but about 20 millimeters in length if you uh, see what I'm saying yeah so the slot goes from one side to the other this is to slightly replicate 
the uh, design of the original one, although not being compatible with how the original one works, doesn't really matter. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken this 20 millimeter bar and I've sewn and filed this projection onto the end, this lug which sticks out and drops into that hole at the bottom. So uh, then what I've done is I've fitted a piece of uh, um, just some scrap metal, sheet metal, um, and I've fitted that round and welded it as a shim to build up the diameter of this bar from around 20 mil to around 21 and a half, thereabouts. Uh, so what I'm doing it here is um, this is the top end and I'm fitting another small shim on here. So basically I'm putting a Jubilee clip around the shim and then I'm making it up down one side and then filing it all back and just work it around with a file until it's um, it fits down the inside diameter of um, the piping. Here's a piece which I've sawn off the threaded section. Should, I should be able to slide that on there. You can see, just slides on. So that gives you an idea how tight a fit it is. I'm going to grease this all up when I eventually assemble it in uh, the bike forks. So the idea is what I'm doing here is this is the top end of the forks. Um, I'm talking about top end of the fitting here. Now this knot here, if you can see inside there, um, basically there's the top end of the pipe inside, then this nut. Now the, the, the closure on this nut is slightly smaller than the inside diameter of that pipe, so basically by me welding a shim on the inside, it's going to prevent the actual um, steering column popping up out of this uh, this bearing um, carrying section here. So uh, so basically, this nut will actually be locking the hinge section of the handlebars in to the bottom by pre pushing pressure on the the lug into the aperture I've made at the base so hopefully that all makes sense so this is stopping me having to make a pin and um, drilling a, a, a hole through the side and pinning it or putting the nut from underneath basically that collar does the job taking a little while me thinking all this out so I'm uh, gonna weld that there then I've got a little saw mark and that's the point where I'm actually going to hack this off then I'm going to weld a hinge which I'm going to make onto the top of this section so basically in terms of solid bars I'm only putting say a piece about five inches in length into uh, into the actual forks it's actually about five and three quarter inches you know see five and three quarters near enough if you want that in metric yeah. it's um, about 13.8 centimeters so there you go right so i'm going to get on with this i'm going to weld that in there then remove the jubilee clip finish the welding off then i'm going to work it around with the file as i said before uh, then i'm going to saw that off across there then i'm going to start making up a hinge system using some of my scrap which i've uh, you see i've drilled and chiseled uh, various points um, on various things. <laughs> okay.
I've also been doing a little bit more work on the steering column as you can see here so as I've said prior this isn't exactly the same as how the original steering column was made uh, the original steering columns don't appear to have any bearings in them uh, they're basically just pretty much like tubing slid together and you grease them up um, they were only really designed for short usage um, you know <laughs> They, they didn't these bikes didn't have uh, a large life expectancy so um, I've decided to use bicycle components so I've used the standard piece of piping is this called the headstock on the bike I'm not really sure um, and standard bearings and uh, this is meant that I'm able to saw it off quite short basically just a short length of piping it's off a BMX bike and um, I've made my own uh, hinge here so basically I've welded this component here onto the top of the BMX piping you can see it's all very simple and I've used some heavy bar which would be about 22 millimeters diameter well probably probably a bit more maybe near to an inch and then I've sawn it down I've cut a hole right through it I've made this piece up here out of separate bits of steel um, and welded it all together and this side here is actually got an eight millimeter thread in it and an eight millimeter bolt stainless steel bolt goes right through it so this actually isn't welded together yet see the pipe is swiveling there so that is going to be the last job i do on this column uh, so that i make sure that the steer that the handlebars are in the correct position for when the bike is driving forward straight in a straight line so i need to make sure the handlebars are all welded in the correct alignment and when I come to weld it I'm probably just going to put a seam of weld around here so I start off with a couple of tacks tack weld on each side and double check that it actually is in alignment and then when I'm 100% sure then I'll finish the weld off so what we have here is we have a tube that slides around the column and from this tube here you have a little lug welded onto it which is a hinge for another pipe which runs down here between the uh, the two frame tubes and that has a, a a tube which swivels in this area in fact let's get a little bit of piping and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about I've got a little off cut of tube somewhere around here so this is about 22 millimeter pipe so inside of this 22 millimeter pipe we'll probably have a an angle drop linking pipe coming down which is around 20 mil um, thereabouts this might be a little bit loose for it but um, this is all galved pipe so it's actually quite good it won't rust so easily anyway so uh, so basically we have a piece of piping down here uh, with I think the term is gimbals on it basically it swivels there and it has a locking pin so it has a hole drilled into the side and then the same sort of arrangement as we have here it's a spring loaded um, locking pin which uh, on this, in this case holds the seat in position the, this seat fixing also has um, a wing nut it didn't have a wing nut uh, during the war they, they had uh, a different system and I might be duplicating that they have a T-bar which runs through but for the time being I'm using a, uh, a carriage bolt M8 carriage bolt and a wing nut and I've just made this up out of some pipe so so there we go so you probably want some measurements on this thing 
what I'll just do is I will I will stick my tape measure up against this now you can see the positions on this thing yeah so there's my forks down at the bottom yeah coming up so you can see the swivel the swivel part pipe is just locked in position with two pieces of steel uh, mild steel collars which are 15 millimeters in depth that piece of tube there the, the swivel piece is 65 millimeters um, in length and it swivels around so yeah you can get some measurements off it now can't you yeah if you can see that for those people who are not looking on a smartphone I hate smartphones everyone should look at YouTube on a PC or even a, a widescreen TV that's what my videos are, are dedicated to using big monitors not smartphones smartphones are annoying little I'm not going to say the words because um, I, want to, I want children to be able to watch these videos um, so I'm not allowed to say what I think of smartphones anyway so up on the top end of here then we're going to have another little gadget and I've made, been making this so it composes of a piece of angle iron which I've chopped up it's a piece of angle iron which was left over from when I did all the framework for this uh, for my sheep shack yes yeah, sheep shack I keep sheep in here right so um, yeah basically junk angle iron here you go here's an off cut of uh, my angle iron so I fished this off the floor somewhere and this is going to be the top of my handlebars and let's remove the tape measure there we go and this is going to be welded in that sort of position like so onto the top of my pipe and what we have there at the top is these two little swivel like, sort of like washers but with uh, protuberances <laughs> little lugs coming out the side so you can see it's ba these are basically cut out of some six mil scrap steel which um, come off this old uh, gate hinge you know a big barn door hinge which someone left with me once they were trying to use it for some other job so I've basically sawn the two ends off and I've made these two uh, gadgets now so I've got my angle iron which is probably about four three and a half to four centimeters across with an m8 bolt going through it now the head of this m8 bolt here is going to be welded on to this plate here so you get the idea basically I've got three components here I think you've got it sussed if you look at one of the pictures of how the real handlebars work um, just as a note each of these handlebars from the center point there to the ends is 13 inches long okay there's a good bit of info that uh, there is the locking pin for the seat um, yeah I know it's uh, but, but that's that's one a reproduction one so you can see how they should look yeah so that there would be uh, where the uh, t-bar would go in and you'd clamp this around the um, the seat mount down there yeah but I'm just using bits of whatever I have lying around so as I say so you can see the idea it's like two washers welded in now on the original one 
these things will be very heavy steel they're probably more like this which is one centimeter thick and this is what I was originally going to use I was sat watching TV last night and sort of doodling all this I stuck a um, like um, a salt shaker down on it and I started drawing around it with my pen and working out exactly what it should look like and I was going to have a hole through the centre but I just sort of started thinking about it why have it a centimetre thick I know they had it a centimetre thick in World War 2 but this thing is just getting ridiculously heavy um, and I thought 6 millimetres thick or slightly under in fact I'd say this is about five four and a half to five mil thick is more than adequate and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend some handlebars using a pipe bender a uh, electrician's pipe bender and uh, then I'm going to slightly flatten the ends of the pipe slide them in and weld them up yeah so hence I've made these about 20 millimeters width and they're going to be fitted inside my pipe I, if, if I don't like that I might just grind them a bit smaller and weld them in because if you look at the originals they didn't seem to have any deformation to the ends of the pipe so I may well just grind them down a little bit so that they slide inside the pipe easily so they'd want to go down more to um do, 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 insane old measurement it's probably about 17 millimeters in width so i've only got to take three mil off bung them in there weld them on now you got to say yeah but the original ones locked together now the trick with doing something like this and to make your own simple system for locking it is um, yeah so, so basically when they're open they should not swivel upwards you, you wouldn't want that when you were riding the bike you wouldn't want them to be doing that all the time so basically what you do is you drill a six mil hole or something similar each side of this lug and you go and you pass it right through all the way through into the um, angle iron at the back now so that's your opened position you could do two holes in fact you could do one hole here on this side and one hole on that side making sure that you don't weaken your washer or whatever we want to call this we could call them nines and sixes if you wanted to uh, to be uh, funny about it we can call them the numbers call them the sixes six, the six uh, brackets whatever um, yeah so um, yeah so don't make it too big in fact if you make two you could probably put some like four millimeter uh, holes so drill two holes and then what you do is you stick some bar round bar right through it and uh, you weld the heads of it over on this back plate here so when you want to strip it down to put it into its other position you spin the nut the wing nut back you loosen it all up and then you swing them round and when you get them in the right position you have another pair of holes in the second plate and in the angle bracket at the back and you line those holes up push it all back together and spin the lock nut up again then you fold your handlebars down yeah so you get the idea so basically you've got a two position um, locking hinge I think that's enough so I'm just going to get on with doing this now I'm not going to video me bending the pipes um, you're just going to have to look up pipe bending I just want to get on with it okay told you what I'm doing okay I'm going to use this um, this photograph that I found on the web and I'm going to use my angle finding device 
and I'm going to set it approximately like so and you may actually be able to work out an angle on that I'm going to leave that uh, to you to all strain your eyes to uh, to see exactly what that is so I haven't got my specs on at the moment but basically I'm just copying this angle and I'm then taking it like so and I'm swinging it over here to my pipe bender and you basically see it's a very simple machine you stick your pipe in here you, you put it at a potential uh, a certain distance in so basically what I've done is I've looked at these handlebars and the bend seems to be quite close to the uh, to the center point so so basically uh, I've determined that if anything I might be sawing a bit off but I think that could be pretty much spot on so I've allowed it half an inch over basically you sit this thing pretty much vertical put a bit of metal over half an inch then you basically swing this arm down and you bend your pipe to the angle that you need it to be and you double check yeah so when you've got one end done then you measure your 13 or so inches along the length of the pipe, saw it off, and you do your second piece. Easy. This is 20 millimeter conduit, and as far as I remember, the uh, twist grip throttle for an electric uh, bike will fit straight on this piping. Okay. Anyway, enough of the sheep again. Um, so, this is the um, handlebars coming together. You can see basically, if we look at original um, set of handlebars I've measured, between the two ends of the handlebars, measuring with the tape measure, quick job, it's 54 centimeters, right? So that's across the outer edges of the pipes right and metric and imperial combinations as people do um, so we've got 13 inches from the center of the handlebars round to there so working out laying this all on the floor so I've got 54 centimeters to approximately the outer edge of these pipes here 54 so if I was to cut across there and across there, uh, that gives me the length. Then what I'll, I'll then do is I will measure back using another tape measure, 13 inches from my cut back to the center. And I have checked this and this setup is working so I've got the angle bent correctly I've got the length of them correct so basically I just need to get my pen and mark out positions and I mark out where the center is on here but I, then I'm going to subtract um, a centimetre or, or, or so off each side and weld the pipes onto these lugs onto my number sixes okay yeah, so uh, anyway, so I'm just going to get on with that, right? Right, so this is what the uh, the um, handlebars work out like. That's going to be replaced with some sort of big round nail nut, which I'm going to have to make so that I can tighten it up nicely. But, you know, there's a little wiggle in it, slight wiggle, but that's all right. Uh, basically, to change it to its other position, you spin the nut back, wing nut as it is at the moment, push that forward, pull the centre one back, and then you swing them back again, and they lock into position two, and that's the fold-up position, yeah? So you've got two positions to lock it in. 
So if we take this wing nut right off, like so, we pull that out, you can see basically how I've done it. It's, uh, it's like a dog clutch sort of idea. So you've got four holes in there. So if we back that off, you can see it's just welded pretty scruffily on the back. But that doesn't matter because um, that's sort of how things were done in World War II. They were uh, quite often uh, put together quite, uh, quite rough and you could see the welds. So basically that's the open position for the handlebars. And if we were to measure the distance across the handlebars quickly, it should come out to about 54 centimetres. Look at that. That's pretty close to 54 centimetres. I'm quite happy there, yeah? And uh, from the centres of the handlebar, this isn't quite so easy to do. It should be basically around 13 inches. So you get that? Now, another point of measuring is from the center to there, we're looking about five inches to the bend. So that leaves the remaining around seven inches or so on the other part. Right, so, um, the angle which these sit up at, I've had to basically just work it out from photographs. Uh, hang on, I'm putting that on the wrong way around. Put it on that way. Put my nut back on it. Right, so we're going to give you a look at the side view here. <coughs> uh -huh. This is the angle I've presented it at. It's probably more than 45 degree angle. Um, let's have a little look. I'm pretty happy with the angle I've chosen here. Reason being, I've, uh, I've sat on the bike and sort of positioned this and the handlebars, I'm... Shut up, sheep! Right, uh, basically I'm up above this, this thing, obviously looking down, so my hands come down onto the bars quite, quite, quite at a reasonable angle. And um, because I'm over six foot tall, it's not the easiest vehicle to ride anyway. I've um, got to find room for my legs yet. So, uh, right, angle presented. Let's see if we can get a, an approximate angle on this. Do, do, do. Let's see how to get in position. Can we see this? Over here we're looking at... Wish I had my specs on at the moment. We're looking at that on there, so... I think that's something like a hundred and twenty... Um, a hundred and twenty-three? So it's a hundred and twenty... twenty-three degrees from this side here over to there um, yeah okay so you can do the maths I might even put put it up on the thing so it's 180 degrees minus 23 yeah if you want to read it from this side um, I should be able to read it directly off anyway 
there you go, so that's the handlebars. Um, okay, I'm going to get on with the next steps. I'm probably going to have to thicken these pipes up a little bit in order to put the twist grip throttle on. Uh, but that's easy enough to do. It's easier to thicken a, the, the outside diameter of a pipe than it is to thin it down. Right, the next part is the steering column locking pin um, or swivel point for the steering column locking pin, I, I should probably call it. So, uh, they, basically, this is, a set, this is a small component which mounts down at the side, uh, sorry, down between the chassis rails. And um, basically, you can get a reference point for this by putting the can, the, the, the pannier tank, on the side here. And uh, you can work out the point where um, where this thing needs to swivel and the point where it needs to swivel is just there so because that needs to swivel at that point just there so that we can get at the the key that basically means that this component here this swivel piece probably needs to have the welds popped off and pushed back a bit because this Basically, the, the hinge point of that should be directly above the central point of where the swivel um, is. Otherwise, when the uh, well, basically the geometry just won't won't work out. Um, if we were to use my finger as a as a guide, if that's swinging that way, um, as this column moves up and down then the pipe that's going through underneath is going to be hitting the engine block so that's not going to work out so this is going to need to be shifted forwards you get the idea and uh, to make this block i'm using some box section steel light gauge box section steel this is a, probably about 15 mil by 35 or 40 um, mil yeah basically uh, I've sawn a section off that which is right here then I've uh, triangulated the corners to find the center center punched it marked it out with uh, crappy old um, a compass um, made, uh, that I had in school is covered in paint. Uh, right then, I've drilled a series of holes, punched them out and, uh, over my vise, and filed it. And now I've taken a piece of 22 mil pipe, I've slotted it down the side, and I've closed it up a little bit so that the diameter is reduced so there's not as much play between this 20 mil and the pivot point you see this thing is has to be designed to move as the pipe slides in and out so um, it also needs a lock which is going to come in through from the side and to make that lock i will probably use a piece of this pipe here and I'll cut a bit of metal away in that corner and the lock will probably go in just around about there and it'll be done the same sort of way as I have my seat lock here with a spring inside and a plunger right so you got the idea so I've mounted that pipe through this. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to run a weld around the edge there on the base and on the top and then that central piece is done. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark some steel out for the ends and I'm going to drill holes through the ends of these steel blocks and I'm going to weld an M8 nut on the inside uh, central so that I can then put bolts through and into it 
So what I'll probably do is the bolts will be long enough to effectively bottom out on the central pipe in there and then they won't go in any further if you follow. Yeah, you get the idea? Uh, there's various ways, you could just put uh, bolts in or pins in and then drill a hole right through and lock it with a split pin, wire lock it, whatever you want to do so that you know everything's going to swivel around but I think the way I'm doing this is going to work out. Then basically on the, t on the side of the frame you drop two pieces of um, flat bar down straps effectively with holes in the sides and they swivel on it just like is shown here see that shows you with a bolt going in from the side on both sides so as i say the effect is the bolt will go in so far and then it will ground out on that pipe won't go in any further okay i'm going to get on with it well, this is my little swivel point, uh, swivel locking point, whatever you want to call it, and um, it's coming on quite well. As I say, I've made two end caps to weld on. I've stuck two M8 nuts on there, put the bolts and the nut captive, and then I've welded the two sides. Right, this side here, I've now filed with a rat tail file. Um, slots so that when I put this pipe in here it protrudes out corner wise like so so that's going to be fitted into there um, what I I may do now is I might actually just trying to think I might saw this off first and tap a hole reason being if I don't uh, tap a hole into here now then I, it's going to be blanked off at the end. Um, easy, any, meeny, miny, mo. I think I'm not going to worry about it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it and then saw the pipe off. And I might do it differently. What I may do is I may get a large M10 nut and weld an M10 nut on the back of this and do it differently or an M8 or something I don't know um, I've got a few options here but either way I'll be drilling a hole down the center so if I do put my thread tap down afterwards it will still go out and into the center so it's not an issue so I'm going to weld this side up and I'm going to seam weld around the edges then I'm going to put the other end on and do the same okay okay so once the um, steering column mounting is done and this swivel unit is fixed in this is how it should come out uh, basically there's a pin which is which is is locked there and once I pull that out I think the column I think it's just moved a little bit then actually that will close down so the column folds down and you'll notice if we can see down through there the end of the pipe should miss the steel plate down at the bottom which it just about does and that leaves the handlebars folding down like so and obviously um, if I raise this up again to around there you can see I've changed the nut which goes on and I've used a, um, a wheel off an old disused angle grinder and I've welded an M8 nut to the inside of it so that is easier to unscrew than one of the uh, wing nuts which I had on prior and if we adjust this and close the uh, handlebars in the other position by tightening up that wing nut 
I won't do it completely, but you can see how this closes up and the handlebars shut down onto the frame like so. Yeah? And obviously the same goes for the seat. If I just do that, the seat collapses like so. Okay, once the steering column is completed, I can now take a tape measure and place it up along the front and you can see all the various points of interest, um, both measured off in metric and imperial in inches. So you can see the various points. I'm just swiping this along slowly up the steering column so you can see and get some measurements off this. Okay? For those people not looking on a smartphone, they should have no problems with this screen. <laughs>